Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here, and I'm here today with the Studio Logic Numa Compact 2. Now, this has a street price of $499, meaning that wherever you go to buy this, whether it's a brick and mortar store like Sam Ash or Guitar Center or Sweetwater or wherever, or online, that's what you can expect to pay $499. Now, that is an awesome price for everything that you get in this. It's just unreal. So let me go over what you get exactly with this. You get a Fatar TP9 Piano Action Keys with Aftertouch. Aftertouch, boy, in a price of $499, you really are going to be hard-pressed to find that anywhere else. And you've got full 88 keys there's eight sound categories and there's 88 different sounds into this and all those sounds are stored on a one gigabyte flash ram chip all right and you also have 128 note polyphony which is really good for that price range you've got split and layer capabilities you've got four simultaneous real-time effects plus You've got string resonance and you've got reverb. So a total of really six real-time effects. And you've got a 20 watt amp and speakers built into here too. Total of 20 watts, 10, 10 watts on the left, 10 watts on the right for a total of 20. Now, here's a really cool thing. You power it with the AC adapter that they give you you plug it into your AC mains or your wall outlet. Now here's another cool thing. You know, it comes with this AC adapter which you plug into the wall and it plugs into here. So you got everything going for you. You can play, you've got an amp and speakers, you can hear everything. Cool, you can power this thing. But you can take your USB cable, plug it into your computer, and this thing gets power from the USB cable. So if you have a laptop computer and you're out in the woods or whatever, you can power this. The only thing is when you're powering it with a USB cable, that will turn the unit on, but you won't have amplification. You won't have the amps or the speakers. So basically what it's good for at that point is as a MIDI controller, so you're controlling a VST or some other virtual instrument with this or your DAW or whatever, okay? Now, here's the really cool thing for $499, and I haven't seen any other board that does this in this price range. The firmware that's built into this, whenever Studio Logic puts out an update to the firmware, you can go ahead and download that, and you can update the firmware here. So, it's firmware updatable. Very, very, very cool. In this price range, that's almost unheard of. Okay, and there's all kinds of other things, but when you're doing effects, the auto set parameter, one of the things that you can adjust, can be set to memorize your effect settings so you don't have to store anything for each location or whatever. So for each sound, it memorizes the effect settings that you have. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Okay, so, and then there's the back panel. So let's start with the back panel. Those are the, your ins and outs. All right, so starting over here from this side and going here. All right, so you got the 12 volt DC power supply. It comes with that. You plug it into your AC mains, converts it into 12 volts DC that goes into the board. All right, the power switch is just to the other side of that. So that's where you turn it off and on on. Um, and by the way, once you turn it on three seconds, you can start playing, really cool. All right, so next to that, you've got your MIDI in and outs, and those are your legacy MIDI five pin dins. Really cool, so you can hook this up to any other MIDI-able instrument. Okay, next to that, you got your USB port, which I kind of just went over, but you got USB over MIDI, and you can power this with USB power to turn this on without amplification or speakers, as I mentioned a moment ago. All right, then you've got pedal one and pedal two. Um, pedal one is an expression pedal input so that you have expression control or volume control, whatever. 
uh, pedal two is for your universal pedal or your damper pedal or whatever you want to use there. And after that, you've got your headphones, which is configurable over here to be either headphones or an auxiliary output, left and right stereo. Now the speakers on the back panel over here, all right? Now this black grill that covers the speakers, and that's where the sound is coming out from, those measure three inches wide by one and a half inches tall. So you don't have a really big speaker back here. Uh, it's not going to move a lot of air, so I wouldn't recommend this with a band, but for home use, to hear what you're doing, perfect. All right, so let's get into everything that it does. You already heard me playing the piano on this. So it's got what I call six different sections here. A control section, sound bank section, effects one section, effects two section, a reverb section, and what I'd like to call the output section. Now the output section contains an EQ, it's only two band, which is bass and treble, and also has volume and something they call mastering. And the mastering, I'm not sure if it's actually a brilliance controller or a compression controller, or a combination of both, but that's what this section is comprised of. All right, so let's go back to the control section, and you've got an edit button, which is a global button as well, you got a store button, you got a MIDI button, and a sound button. So basically this little OLED screen over here shows you what you're controlling. So right now this is set for sound. So if I put this on MIDI, now we're controlling MIDI. You got two zone MIDI control, zone A, zone B. If I put it on sound, I've got two different sounds that I can control at once lower or upper and right now upper is lit so that's across the whole keyboard so right, right now the upper is set for a concert grand now this button right here this is a knob that you turn as well as a button that you push this is going to be the main knob or button that you're going to use mostly now when the screen this this white background part that shows that that's what I have the focus on right now. It shows concert and volume at 120 and it has a range of A0 through C8 which is across the entire board. Alright so when I turn, alright let's play something. When I turn this up, I'm increasing the volume. When I turn it down, I'm decreasing the volume. All right, so now you see what I'm doing with this control here. All right, now when I push this, I go to the other part of this control, which is strings. And you're not hearing anything because that's on the lower. So let's get rid of the upper. All right, right now, both of these are off lower and upper. By the way, you're not hearing anything, so that's the equivalent of local off. All right. Now let me press lower here so you can hear the strings. And again, this is across the entire keyboard. Now if I press upper, both lower and upper are pressed at the same time. This gives me a layer. Piano as well as strings together. Cool. Now, if I press the split button, all of a sudden the strings are on the lower half of the keyboard and the piano is on the upper half. So it's really easy to do splits and layers. Now, over here, this 
whatever I have control of right now, right now it's the concert piano that's highlighted with the white background. I can control the volume of that. And if I press this again, I'm going over the strings and I can control the volume of that. So if something is a little bit louder in the right and not loud enough in the left, I can adjust that here by pressing this button to get the focus of what I want to change and turning the volume knob. It's as simple as that. It's really cool. All right. And also, whatever I'm doing here, right now we're in the sound section. If I go back to the MIDI section, Zone A, Zone B, same kind of idea. Whatever I'm controlling here, I can press the button, go back to Zone A, or go back to Zone B, and I can control the volume. All right, and either of these, whether I'm in sound or MIDI mode, I can go ahead and press Edit, and now I can control a whole bunch of other stuff. I mean, a lot of stuff. And more than I'm willing to go through in this video because you have so much control over everything here. All right. So let's go over to the next section over here. I'm going to turn split off so I have player. Turn that off so I have piano across the whole thing. All right. And by the way, when I press something like there, there's eight different sound sections here. So when I press something like acoustic piano, I see four things here available to me. Concert, stage, vintage, studio. And if I turn it again, I get another four choices. Rock, upright, E grand, E grand two. And that's it. There's eight different pianos here. So if I go to concert here and I go to stage, vintage, st studio, So it's real easy to sample or listen to whatever I want. And by the way, if I'm in concert right now, and I'm holding it with my sustain pedal, and I go to stage, I can hear that too. And I go to the next one, vintage. So in other words, it's seamless when I go from one piano to another. So unlike a lot of other boards that actually cost even more than this it's not seamless you go from one piano to the next it cuts off the first piano before you can hear the second piano this holds the first piano and the new piano that you're playing and you can actually hold those two and go to the third piano you could actually hold those three and go to the fourth really cool all right so that's piano. I can go to electric piano, and I've got four more choices over here. And it doesn't stay on very long, so... All right, keys. Clavinet. Uh, do it again, Harp, harpsichord. Bass guitar, acoustic, electric bass, slap, plucked, there's more, organs, jazz, drawbar with vibrato, What I like is the pipe two organ. I mean, this has got some great sounding instruments to it. Better than some of the boards that are much more money than this, but the sounds here are phenomenal. Some of the sounds are a bit eh, but mostly they're really, really good. All right, synth sounds. Or 
orchestral. I mean, there's a there's a lot of things you can play around with, and then there's other. So let's go back to piano. All right. Then there is the effects sections. Now the effects sections, you've got effects one and effects two, and you can have both of those on at the same time. And each one of them controls your upper and your lower. So when you have a split or a layer, you can control what effect to send to the upper and what effect to send to the lower. Now with the uh, effects one, you have drive, chorus, phaser, and flanger available to you for each of upper or lower or both. And it's real easy. The upper is lit right now. If I press this, the lower is lit. So if I go ahead and select drive for upper and I go to lower and I select chorus, it remembers that upper is drive, lower is chorus. Now how much you want to send to each is controlled by this little pot right here. And it's the same thing, same idea with effects too, but the effects are a little bit different. You've got rotary, tremolo, pan tremolo and delay. So these are, rotary is probably going to be used more with your organ stuff, all right? And again, same idea, upper and lower, and your pot over here to control how much. Reverb, that's another good one. Now let me turn the effects off. You can control how much effects with these pots here. Just turn them to zero to turn everything off. All right, so reverb, that's another good one. Basically, you select what type of reverb you want, and I like Hall. And how much Hall you have is controlled with this pot right here. All right, and the last section is what I like to call output control. And basically, it's a two-band EQ, bass, and treble. But... There's so many boards in this price range and even more that don't have any EQ that you can control right here on the surface. So that's a big, big plus over here. You can control the bass. You can control the treble. And the volume. And this little pot here they call mastering. Now, mastering, I'm not exactly sure what, if it's a brilliance control or a compression control or a little bit of both or a combination of both. So mastering, let's turn it all the way down and slowly turn it all the way up. So then you have your stick one and stick two. Now there's no modulation wheel or pitch bend wheel, but you have modulation and pitch bend sticks. And again, these are also programmable. And you can use the same programming for these sticks to program your expression pedal. So it can have the same function in one of these. Now, Stick one, you can move it from left to right and it'll bounce back into place. It doesn't stay where you put it. Or you can move it up and down. Now with stick two, if you move it to the right, it stays there. If you move it to the left, it stays there. If you move it up and down, it bounces back. So it's the opposite of stick one. Stick one, if you move it to the left or right, when you let go, it comes back. Stick two, if you move it up and down, it comes back when you let go. And that's pretty much it without getting into the guts of this stuff. But really, I am so impressed with this thing for $499. Now, if you are a pianist, you might be disappointed with the keyboard here. Again, like I said, this is a Fatar 
TP9 piano with aftertouch action. The problem here is this is a semi-weighted board, not fully weighted. So for a pianist, you've got semi-weighted keys here. It's spring-loaded. Now these keys, they're a little bit different than your standard keyboard keys. They're five and a half inches long, and the black keys are three and a half inches long. And on your standard keyboards, they're six inches long and four inches long, respectively. Okay, so not every keyboardist needs to have weighted keys. And it's not graded hammer action. It's not heavier on the bottom than it is on the top, like an acoustic piano. Again, this is not for a pianist, but I am a pianist. I also do parts for a classic rock band. So this works out really well for me. And like you saw at the beginning, I can play piano on this. So yes, you can do piano with this. Uh, if you're serious about doing piano only, if you're strictly a pianist, this probably isn't the board for you, although you could probably get away with it. All right, so that's about it for now. There's so much more to this board, but I think I've covered pretty much a good overview of what this does. Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.